Hello, this is a video about how to set your guitar up inside Voltage Modular so you can use it as a big virtual pedal board and guitar rig system. Um, I, you might have seen that recently I've done a couple of videos on the Waverley Instruments uh, Junior Verb Deluxe and the Plus version and also the Minicab Driver and the Minicab Driver Plus which are two just killer amp sims uh, but I know that Rob, who developed them, has been having some people kind of get in touch who may not be familiar with kind of what voltage modular is and how kind of modular systems work. So I thought I'd do this video to talk guitarists through it. All right. So I'm going to make some assumptions here. Uh, I'm going to assume that you know a little bit about how to use kind of audio software. Uh, in as much as you know what your audio interface is, whether that's kind of in, built into your computer or an external one like I'm using, and that you know how to get a guitar, like a guitar signal from your guitar into your computer. All right. If you don't, then look at how to do that first. The way I'm doing it is I've got an external interface. It's a, uh, a Focusrite Scala 18i20. My guitar is plugged straight in to uh, input one on there, which is basically a kind of high impedance guitar input, the way I've got it set up. Uh, so that's it, that's how my guitar is getting to the computer. Before you start, you need to go to the link below and download Voltage Modular, which is free from Cherry Audio, from their website, um, and then install it. I'm gonna assume you know how to do that, which is all fine. Once you've installed it, you can open it up. Ta-da, and it looks like this, yay. Uh, if you've seen the other videos, you, you'll have seen this layout before. Along the top, you've got you know various things. This was designed for setting up, uh, kind of building virtual modular synthesizers, right? So I'm going to go up here first to this little magnifying glass. I'm going to zoom in 250% so you can see it a bit clearer. Um, so things like CV sources, poly sources, MIDI, uh, transport. I've never even touched those so far. I'm sure we. I'm sure I will at some point. But for guitar stuff, they're not necessary in the first instance by any means. Um, audio sources. Now that is going to be your guitar. You can see here that you've got two meters happening. Uh, this is my microphone, obviously, so that's why that's going up and down. If I turn my guitar up and play, you can see there that my guitar signal is getting to. Um, the computer because that meter is going up when I play the guitar. There are chapters by the way below if you know how to do this but you can always skip ahead I would recommend that. Um, so the guitar is getting there, brilliant. Let's check that we can hear it. So the way that you patch things is the way as if, as, as if you're patching with cables right between pedals, same deal except they're virtual uh, patch cables. So you just click and hold and then you drag your cable where you want it to go. In this case, we just want to take it over here to our main out to host section. The host is your computer. Uh, and we're going to go from one left over here, which is where my guitar is, over to one left M for mono there. So now when I play a chord, you can hear my slightly out of tune guitar. Coming through and it's just going straight through not no effects or anything, right? The only thing it's being affected by is this volume control and the limiter, which I'm going to turn on. Okay, so that's cool. That now we know that we have a guitar signal going in and again coming out. That's the important thing. If you don't have that, what you need to do is go up to the settings menu, which is on this cog. Click that. Now there's various things in here: general, uh, all this stuff here, CPU. You can fiddle with that later, not important to fiddle with it. Now interface, uh, this is quite handy, the zoom interface two times button. It's a bit big for our purposes today but it's useful uh, and the cabinet theme is essential. We're on light maple at the moment, let's go for splatter shall we? Or no let's not, let's go for metal foil, what a nice change. Cables, um, how you animate these cables that go between the things, I'm not going to waste time looking at that now. Account, that's your account, don't need to look at that. Audio MIDI. Now this is where you kind of you need to pay attention. Um, your audio device type. Again, I'm assuming you know what your audio device type is. Mine is an ASIO interface. So I've selected ASIO. 
I'm running Windows 10, so I've got these other various things here as well. But ASIO is what my sound card works on, right? Uh, output one and two, that's going to my speakers. Three and four is going off to my uh, video recorder. Input channels, one and two are my input channels. Now, if your guitar is not showing up on this meter here, it's worth checking that you've got these selected right um, and that you're plugged into the one that is highlighted. You can, you, it doesn't have to be just two. You can have, you know, multiple. You can have four inputs going at once, basically. Um, I'm just using one and two, so that's selected there. Now, your sample rate. If you don't know what sample rate is, I suggest you you, you go and have a, watch another video about that. But th basically, the higher the sample rate, the more samples, so the more slices of audio it's taking, your, your computer's taking per second. So the quality goes up, the processing requirements also go up. Uh, mine can do 48K, which is 48,000 hertz, relatively comfortably. There are other options behind, in this, this case, in the control panel here. So that opens up the, uh, sorry, move that over so you can see it. The control panel here for my audio device and in here i've got all the sample rates available to me i'm going to stick with 48k now the buffer size this if you get the kind of glitching sounds which i'm going to demonstrate in a minute this is what you need to fiddle with so i'm going to if i select a really short size really short buffer size 60 you hear those crackles that's because the buffer size is too small for what i'm trying to do with my fairly old computer so if you hear that there we go, you can hear that just crackling away. That probably means that your buffer is set to be too small. So I'm going to change that. So we'll try 128. 128 is pretty good. The bigger the buffer, the more latency you introduce. If you're not familiar with what latency is, it's the amount of time it takes for, for your signal when it gets to the computer to when it gets back out. The more stuff you do in between there in terms of processing, so the more plugins, the more amps, the more load you put on your computer, basically, the, the kind of the bigger the latency, almost. Well, the, the more load that puts on the processing power, which generally means you need to then have a bigger latency so that your computer can keep up, if you're going to get specific. Um, so, but you know, you can get away with a fairly big buffer size, I find you get used to it relatively quickly. You can see here that 128 samples is only 2.7 milliseconds. So, so I can tell it's there, but it's like, it's so minuscule and you get used to it um, so quickly that I'm going to actually increase it, give myself a bit more headroom on that up to 200 up to 256, sorry, cut my audio then, it didn't give me a second. So that gives me a little bit more, I can still play with that buffer size fairly happily. That's pretty cool, right? Um, good, so I'm gonna leave that there. Now, uh, up here on my cable, I'm going to right click it and disconnect that cable because I'm going to show you how to actually patch stuff in. Uh, up here, you've got two buttons, library and perform. Library opens up all of the effects. Perform opens up these, uh, these kind of knobs and buttons, which are really designed for live performance mapping to a MIDI controller, which we'll come to later. I'm going to turn them off for now because we don't need to see them. So in the library, there's all of these different effects and things. I'm going to just go for a real basic simple amplifier setup. The amp I'm going to use is the Minicab Driver Plus. That's all you do is you drag it in, click and drag. I'm going to put it over this side so I can make sure I don't cover it up with my little adorable face in the corner. So there we go. Now as we patch from the input to the output, you, you click, you hold, and you just pull that cable down and here where it says in, you go there, in. On the left, because the guitar is a mono source, right? It's just one source. So I'm going to turn that up. <sighs> but we can't hear it. We can't hear it because, but you can, listen, you can tell that it's getting, getting the thing here. Now listen, you can hear some crackles going there. There's a very useful button in here. If you've been messing around with your buffer size, click the reset device button. There we go. It kind of just helps to um, do a bit of housekeeping there. Right, so now I've, got, I've gone to my input, my left input, and you can see this light tells me, yay, that it's working. 
So you need to take the outputs now up to where we went before, to the output there. Now, if you just do left, that's fine. That's just mono, right? So that's similar to if you just use the single microphone in front of an amplifier. Fine. I love the stereo option here, so I always use the right as well, because that means that the room control, which we talk about at length in the previous video about the Minicab Driver Deluxe. Uh, so to go and look at that, there's a link below. Uh, but the room comes out stereo, right? So then you got... Turn my drive up a little bit. Turn my volume down a touch, there we go. Automatic double tracking, always. Stand it all up. So there you go. <clears throat> that is a very basic setup. You go from your input source, which is your guitar, to the in of the amp, then from the out, to there, to the main outs, which takes it off to your speakers. Very, very straightforward. Uh, there are other options, which I will look at now. Um, if you're if you're used to doing uh, it's kind of a, a standard pedal setup, let's say, where you like to have uh, something along the lines of a tube screamer, so this clip driver is very close to a kind of tube screamer style overdrive. So you like one of those in front of your amp, and you also like to have a, um, let me see, I know, you like to have a little compression, a little bit of compression on the front too, right? So what you do then, is you right click there, disconnect that cable, you click and drag, and we're gonna set it up in standard pedal board way, right? So you go into your first pedal, and then you come out of your first pedal, into your second pedal, and you come out of that third pedal, sorry, second pedal, into your amp. Boom. And now these two are in the chain as if they were always there. You can turn them off there. So I'll turn the compressor on, turn the squeeze up. It's made the volume louder, so you turn that down there. More compression. Cool. And then I turn my tube screamer on, I turn the drive up, turn the level down a bit. Just clean my, clean my telly switch. Good. So there we go. I've, and that's my pedals, right? If you've got a MIDI foot controller or any other kind of MIDI controller. I've got this, which I'm using. It's my little nano control uh, mixer thing. MIDI is super easy, right? In this settings menu, audio slash MIDI, you scroll down uh, to here, active MIDI inputs. You can select any, any MIDI controller you've got. So there we go, I've selected that one. And that's good. To select, to, you know, to click on it, uh, click right click, on the thing, where are we? Oops, on the button you want to control. So I want to turn the smooth, I want to turn the clip driver on and off. So I go MIDI learn, and then I press the button I want to use, which is this button here on my, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. But there we go, so. So it's very quick. go. Uh, I also want to put a chorus in the effects loop because that's the kind of guy I am. So my effects loop is here. I talk about this in the other video too. So send left and right, return left and right. Let's right click that. MIDI learn. We'll put that on this button here. So I'm going to turn that up, turn my depth up. So how does that sound? <laughs> Oh, 
a bit much and it's making my poor old computer creak a bit as well. Um, but there we go. That is a very quick setup. If I've missed anything or I have not explained anything adequately or if you've got any questions about anything I've spoken about, please leave a comment below and I will come and I will address that and I'm, you know, I can always make another video to talk about stuff uh, with more detail if needs be. Um, Rob as well is at Waverly Instruments will always answer questions if I don't know the answer. Um, but yeah, just enjoy playing with it. There's so much to play with and it's, you know, you, you've got access to these ridiculous effects chains and stuff, um, which I'll go into an, an, on another video. I just wanted this to be quite basic. Um, but there we go. I'm just going to play out with this sound. I'll turn that chorus off and the compressor because I don't really need them. I keep the tube driver on and the automatic trouble double tracking because that's just my favorite thing in the world at the moment. There we go. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. Keep you up to date with more videos and um, yeah, enjoy playing with the Waverly Instruments effects inside Voltage Modular. It's a really fun system and once you get your head around it, it's incredibly flexible. I mean, you can also, I didn't even mention, over here, you can record whatever you do. So you can record your guitar playing and stuff. Um, and you've got all these auxiliary outputs and things, but we'll go into those in other videos. Um, and you can save little variations. So variation one, let's call it that. I mean, for now, that's fine. And then uh, if I turn the effects loop off, and I turn the compressor on there, then I can save that as a uh, variation two. There we go. And then you can just switch between them. So, and that, those buttons again, MIDI learn, I'll make that one that button, and MIDI learn that one that button. So now I can switch between the two variations on MIDI things as well. So, it's a very flexible system, I love it. A lot of the crackling is just coming from my guitar. It's terrible, isn't it?